Welcome into this uh, training about trout. Um, in this video, I will show you what trout looks like, what are the advantages for aquaponics, but you will also learn some very critical information that is going to help you to grow them at their best potential. Uh, because trout is a very specific fish, uh, it grows extremely fast, but it also generates a lot of waste. So there are a few things that you need to know uh, in order to keep it uh, in good conditions, to keep it healthy and to grow it as fast as possible. So I will give you 12 points, 12 critical points uh, that will allow you to uh, learn more about this fish, understand how this fish works, know, know about the biology of this fish, but also to welcome it in the best condition in your aquaponic system and to make sure that you will grow the fish and keep them alive so with point six, eight, and nine, I will give you very critical information that you really need to understand to make sure that you keep the fish alive and to make sure that you grow them at their best potential. With the point number 12, I will blow your mind. I will uh, teach you something that you probably don't know about trout, something very interesting. So I want this training to be first very, very uh, functional, something that uh, you can practice at home. If you have an aquaponic system, you will be able to grow trout in the best conditions and uh, you will make sure that you keep them alive. I will give you all the specific requirements of this fish and all the specificity, uh, how to manage your aquaponic system to make sure your fish are, are staying alive. So a lot of information, 12 points, but point number six, eight, and nine, you really need to understand them very, uh, very well. That's the reason why most people who try growing trout in aquaponics, they fell because they don't know about those points. Uh, and then the rest is general information. Point number 12 is, is just an extra that is going to blow your mind. So stay on. We will see those 12 points just before I want an introduction uh, about this training. We will catch a few fish. I will explain you the morphology of the fish. And then for the 12 points, we're going to go to the table, to the board. It's going to be more serious information, but I really want you to focus on the point number six, eight and nine of this, uh, of this training. It's going to be super important if you really want to grow trout in good conditions in, in your aquaponic system. Let's catch a few fish. So you see I'm preparing to catch some trout. The first thing I want to tell you is that Trout need oxygen to, to breathe. They need way more oxygen than any other species of fish. So first thing, when you want to catch trout, you put an airstone into your, your bucket. So here is what I mean by airstone. You see that we got a pipe. This pipe is connected to an air pump. And here I got a stone. Uh, it diffuses the, uh, the oxygen or the air actually. So I put this in the bucket, then when I put some water, it's going to create some bubbles. And it's going to make sure that when we handle the fish, when we keep them into the bucket, the fish are still in very good condition. There is enough oxygen, so they are comfortable. The last thing you want is to stress the fish when you catch them, when you transport them, whatever, without oxygen. Uh, the fish, those type of fish, they consume a lot of oxygen. So you need to make sure there is enough supply for their needs. So you see, I just transfer a bit of water into a bucket. And now I will take my net and start to catch them. So one good thing about trout is that they have been domesticated for years. So when you try to catch them, they are way easier to catch than any other species of fish, any other, you know, native species of fish. So here we have uh, a golden trout, very nice fish. A second one. Four fish. Now we have a male brook trout. That's very interesting, I will show you this. All 
Okay, so we'll have a close look at those fish. So in this bucket, we got two species of fish. Uh, the first one is a golden trout. So this golden trout here is the same fish as a rainbow trout, right? It's just selected for the color. The color is yellow. But you can see the rainbow on the fish. The rainbow trout, they always have this lateral line. Uh, that is very nice. And here on the golden trout, the lateral line is pink. You see the color? It's very nice. So what makes this fish a trout? The trout are from the family of the salmonids. And the salmonids, they are the family of basically all the trout and salmon are salmonids. So same family and they have this fin here. That is very specific. It's called the adipose fin. Adipose because by history we thought this fin was use useless, you know. We thought it was an interesting part of the fish that was easy to recognize the fish. We thought it was completely useless to the fish. But now there are some studies that show that this fin here is collecting a lot of data. So when the fish is in turbulent water, this fin is telling to the fish how the water is moving around and it helps the fish to adjust the caudal fin. This fin here is a caudal fin. And by doing so, the fish consumes way less energy because it's got this, there are a lot of sensors in this fin that tell him exactly how the current is moving around his body and he's able to, to make some very specific effort now with this fin, the caudal fin, and it allows the fish to consume way less energy. So this fish is extremely efficient in terms of swimming. It can swim in a high current. It can also uh, be raised in a pond, uh, but it's need, it always needs a bit of current. Otherwise, they will always swim in circles, but it's better to give them a bit of movement in the pond, if possible. Uh, another thing to, to understand about those fish is that they are predators. So if you look at the mouse, you see the size of the mouse? You see how I can open it? It's a very big mouse compared to other fish such as silver perch. Uh, this fish is a predator and if you look at the opening, it goes up to the eye position. If you look at other fish such as silver perch or other uh, vegetarian fish, the mouse is just at the extremity of the head and the eye is way, way further. So it's very interesting to see that this fish is a predator, has a big mouth, which means that it can attack other fish and it will eat other fish. That's, how, well, that's what they do in nature. In nature, they, they are predators and they only eat other fish or other animals, insects, or things like that. So you see this one now recovering. So let me catch another one. When you grow fish in aquaponics, you grow them in low density, so the fins are preserved. You see those fins here, they are... You see the fins here, they are in very good shape, they are not damaged. And uh, that's what we want to see. If you look at fish from aquaculture, very often the fins are, are damaged because the fish are in high density and they are uh, touching the side of the pond. Here in aquaponics, we don't have this issue. So that's golden trout. Now, what is interesting about golden trout is that when you look at them from the top, when you look from the top, you see only golden trout. We see here I got a blue basket, right? This basket is blue. So the, the background is blue. So uh, we still have a lot of contrast with the golden trout, but we can also see the other fish, you see, the brown fish, but in a, in a black pond. Normally a liner is black. You will not see the other fish, you will only see the golden trout. So that's why in aquaponics it's very interesting to have golden trout because you really see them in the pond. And uh, it makes it very interesting and easier to handle the fish and to know what's happening in the pond. Now let's have a look at the other species of trout we have here.
So what we now have here is a brook trout. And the brook trout is a very nice fish, but as I, as I just explained, the, the top of the fish, the top part of the fish is dark. So it's a technique that the fish has to not be seen. So if you look at the fish from the top of the pond, like a, like a bird, a predator bird would do, uh, you don't really see the fish because it's the same color as the, as the bottom of the pond, right? And for any big fish that will be swimming underneath, that would be a predator, the fish is white. So it looks like the sky. When you look from the bottom to the top, you don't really see the fish. Most of the fish, they have this color pattern. And that's a way that evolution found to protect the fish from uh, being attacked by any predator in the natural environment. In aquaponics, depending where you live, if you live in a city, you don't have this issue. So you can afford to grow uh, golden trout. But if you live in the countryside and you have birds around, brook trout are a very good option, or even a rainbow trout, but the classic color, not the ye yellow golden one. Otherwise, the golden one could be attacked by birds. So what do we see about this fish? We see the same thing. You see here is the adipose fin. You remember? We just discussed with the golden trout. So the adipose fin is here. This is a lovely uh, little fin. Same fin. This fin is going to give some information to the fish and when he swims with the caudal fin, this fin here, the caudal, is going to adapt the caudal fin for that. Now what do we have here? You see the, the other fins? They have the very lovely white lizare, as we say, which means the, the side of the fin is white. It makes a very nice contrast. So it's a very lovely fish to see. Also, you can see the dots. It's a tiger, but on the side you see red dots. Now, this brook trout here is a female. And the way I know that is because of the morphology of the mouth and the morphology of the body, right? It's rounded. Now, you see it's a long shape, but it's round as well. I will now show you a male. It's totally different. You see, the female is already pretty, but the male is way, way, way more uh, beautiful. So, let's catch a male now. Here we are, we have a brook trout male. This fish is extremely interesting, but you can straight away see the big difference with the female. So, you see the, the mouse? The, the male now is one year old and is in maturation, which means he's starting to develop some, uh, some sperm. And the morphology, the phenotype of the fish is changing as well. So what we can see here, we can clearly see a beautiful mouse. And you know, it's not round like the other, other female. Now it's becoming elongated and you see the, the mouse. The mouse is not round at all. It makes this type of V-shape. You see the opening? Becomes a very big mouse. Now look at the fin. The bottom of the fish is not like the, uh, the female. You see, you still have the white lizare, but you have the nice orange here. And also we have the red dots. Red dots here. And here. And let's see the other male. Maybe he has even more red dots. You know, depending on the level of maturation they, they are in, they have different colors, different patterns. This one has way more red dots. You see all the red dots here? It's really lovely. It's a very lovely fish. Look at that. Look at those dots here. Isn't it completely beautiful? 
So that's one reason why I love trout that much as well, is because of the, of the patterns they have on their body. They are really lovely fish. So we see the white Louis array, we see the very nice colors. And now we can see that this fish is ready for uh, reproduction. And so if you just strip it, you will get the sperm go it out. So this is the anal, anal um, orifice. And if I just push it, I will see some white substance, which is sperm. See it? You see it here, right? See the white? This is the sperm of the fish. So this fish is ready to be repro reproduced. But the female is only, the, the male maturate at one year old, the female maturate at two years old. So it's very different. The female is not ready, the female has got no egg at the moment. But what is even more interesting is that the quality of flesh of those trout is exactly the same as salmon. When you, when you eat trout and when you eat salmon, it's the same fish. Genetically, it's different, right? But in terms of flesh quality, it's the same thing. Generally, salmon is grown in salt water and trout are very often grown in fresh water, even if you can grow the same fish in salt water. When you eat ocean trout, that's rainbow trout that is transferred to uh, ocean. But if you, if you ask me as an expert, I work in the seafood industry, I import fish from everywhere around the world. If you ask me as an expert, if you cook two fillets of fish, if I don't see the size, if you cook two fillets of fish, and if, if you ask me which one is the salmon, which one is the trout, if the skin is removed, if it's just the fillet that I want to eat, I can't tell you the difference. It's impossible to tell the difference. At such a point that sometimes, when we want to make sure we are dealing with the correct fish, because you know there are a lot of fraud in seafood, we have to send the samples for DNA testing. We are not able to tell if it's salmon or if it's trout. That's the same quality. You know that salmon is one of the fish that is most appreciated by humans, right? <laughs> when, it, when it comes about eating fish. Salmon is uh, on the top position. So, when you are growing trout in your pond, you are growing the best eating fish that you can. So that's what, very interesting. That's why trout are one of the very interesting fish to grow. There are a lot of other interesting points. Another one is that they are able to grow very fast and they transform very well the fish food into uh, fish flesh. They are very efficient fish to, to grow. But that's the type of uh, information that we will see in those 12 points. But remember, you need to pay very good attention to point number six, number eight, and number nine. They are the critical information that you really need to understand to be able to grow trout in your aquaponic system and to do it successfully without losing the fish. Without further ado, let's go to the 12 points.